All right, and we're back. Uh, gonna have to backpedal a little bit so that we can stay consistent with the chapters and everything. So we're gonna start off with uh, at H Shrine. That's where I saved it at. That's why I was able to save it at, so I can continue with the story and keep the flow going. So let's get started. Headless Buddha statues are buried in the ground. Creepy. I wonder what happened here. There's a sacred Shimanawa rope on a ragged boulder. I wonder if that boulder is an Uakara? Uakura? What's that? According to ancient Shinto tradition, it's a sacred rock that a god descended on. It's not uncommon for the rock itself to become an object of devotion. It's a wooden shrine, altar. A clouded old mirror serves as the Goshintai. Looks like it's true that no one's taken care of this place for a long time. I peek inside the altar, just in case, but all, but all I find is a thick layer of dust. The Goshintai is outside and the altar is empty. That's concerning. I don't think there's any more we can search. The Buddha statues concern me. Why are all the ones within the shrine missing their heads? Shinto and Buddhism were ordered to be separated during the Meiji period. Before then, many shrines were dedicated to both. Each shrine was much the same. But in the Meiji period, there was a push to make Shinto the main religion. The faiths were forced apart. Extremists stole the Buddha statues from shrines and desecrated them. Oh, the famous anti-Buddhist movement. So this is where that happened. No, it was done in a public space as they wanted to make a show of it. The broken statues were carried here to serve as a memorial for worship. The Kujo family head was said to be grieved, so he moved them in secret. It seems that all the broken statues from around H City were buried here. Strange. You said they were worship, but this place is pretty much a ruin. You have a keen eye, Lord Versailles. The shrine was subse subsequently dug up and the statues were stolen. So they came all the way into this huge forest just to carry off broken statues? Who would do something like that? That, I do not know. I merely heard they were stolen 50 years ago, around the time of the war. So the statues were broken, thrown away, and then dug up. They say the Buddha has a wealth of patience when even he'd get angry. Could that anger have turned to divine wrath and given birth to the mark and spirits? Mary, have you been able to feel the presence of any spirits or whatever? About that, this land is much more foreboding than I had imagined. The admitted enmity of the forest swallows all else. It is hard to sense beneath it. So, too much background noise, right? Yes, although, I do sense the same presence as Lady Chrissy's mark, however faint. I'm sure the spirit that gave her the mark is somewhere in the forest. So, after all that, we were only able to reconfirm something we already knew. Forgive me. I was unable to. You don't have to apologize, Mary. We learned plenty of value here. What do you mean? I'll tell you on the way back. First, let's get the hell out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Maybe it's the ill will Mary sensed. We leave H-Shrine, walking down the beach trail toward the forest entrance. 
Maybe it's because of that strange tail, but... For some reason, I feel like someone is watching us from the darkness of the trees. We begin driving back to the mansion. As we break out of the dense forest, I can see building lights pop up here and there. Well, that was a complete waste of time. My anxiety lifted. I don't even bother to filter the words that slip out of my mouth. Oh, I don't think that's true. It's all coming together for me. Without further prodding, Chrissy starts in on her theory, passion evident in her voice. I believe Shimio was right. A shrine is definitely what's causing all the strange stuff in the forest. I'm sure it's those stolen statues. Don't you agree? Uh, I wonder. It feels like we just don't have enough info at this point to say one way or the other. But there's no denying that a lot of strange things are going on in that forest. Between all the suicides and Shimio wandering around. Uh, it couldn't just be a coincidence. Could it? If we research the shrine, we might learn more about the mark. I feel that's a lot safer than risking our lives looking for the spirit. Don't you think? You might be right. My replies are half-hearted, which isn't what Chrissy was hoping for, so she falls silent. An awkward, uncomfortable silence settles. Lord of Versailles. Please stop the car. Mary speaks for the first time since we entered the car. What is it? I sense a presence similar to Lady Creasy's mark close by. Following Mary's request, I park in a vacant rest stop on the outskirts of H City. Chrissy and I step out of the car. My mark is suddenly scalding. Is something nearby? Look, someone's over there. A small girl steps out of the telephone box. Why is a kid outside this time of night? Thank you for bringing me here out this late, this late at night, Aida. I got to talk to Hane, talk with Haneyome. Oh yeah, glad to hear it. A rather round young man appears, stepping out of the shadows. You got your question answered, Suzu? Suzu. <laughs> yeah, it's okay now. I knew I mean, sure is amazing, though. She knows where everything is. You got that right. She helped me find my limited edition love and hero phone strap I dropped. Uh. What's love and hero? What? You don't know? They're a popular idol group here. They've been all over the all over TV lately. I'm surprised you haven't heard. TV's restricted at home. Mom says it rots your brain. Oh, Aida, is the bus coming soon? Oh, the last bus is on its way. We better go. We'll be in big trouble if your mom finds out we went out. <laughs> yeah. We watch from a distance for a while, but it's hard to determine their relationship. The pain from my scar is suddenly gone. Hey, uh, Christy? What do you think? Uh, uh, I turn, but Christy isn't there. Hey, you there, just how do you know that girl? Depending on your answer, I'll report you for child abduction. Well, there goes Christy, hounding the poor guy. Just c uh, calm down. 
I try to placate her, but she won't budge. I, uh, uh, I, uh. The man stumbles over his words. He looks flustered and overwhelmed. Hey, lady. Don't be mean to Aida. Is it Aida? 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 The girl rushes to stand defensively in front of him and glares at us. She seems a lot more level-headed than the flustered guy behind her. I asked him to help me, okay? I wanted to talk to Hanayome, so I had him come with me. Who's this Hanayome you keep mentioning? A ghost who helps me find things. People say that you can talk to her from this telephone box. A ghost, huh? She looks at me. We're both thinking the same thing. Earlier, the mark was hurting, so maybe. You guys look serious. Uh, what's going on? He nervously glances between us. Does this scar look familiar at all? I show them the mark on my right arm. Hey, hold on. What is this? That looks exactly like mine. Uh... He pulls off one of his gloves and, re and reveals the mark on his hand. It's the cursed scar, yeah. I saw an article on it at Ubart's Monthly. They say it causes amnesia, even kills you, but that's nonsense. It, it's not all true, right? Right? Sounds like he heard the rumors but chose to not to do anything about it. That's no surprise, really. It's tough to believe it's real until your memory loss starts becoming noticeable. Huh. I've got one of those too. It showed up on my left wrist when I made that phone call earlier. Pulling, pulling up her sleeve, she shows us her mark. They both have the mark, and after calling Hanayomi, that's more than a coincidence. Well, we can't just leave them here. Let's bring them to the mansion. We tell them what's going on, and ask them to go to Kujo Mansion with us. It surprisingly doesn't take much to get them to come. I thought it'd take more convincing. Could, could partially be because they missed the last bus while talking with us. Luckily you caught them. Before they climb in, I warned Mary to stay quiet until we get back. It might be a bad idea to freak them out. First, we introduce ourselves. The man's name is Aidi Nakamatsu. The girl is Suzu Morimiya. They tell us they met through the reader's column in Ubart's Monthly. Suzu mentioned she was interested in Hanayomi and Aida told her what he knew. Then she pestered him into bringing her to the rumored telephone box. They were out this late because of her. Her parents sound pretty strict. Her mother keeps a close eye on her after school, and she needs permission to go out. So she snuck out of the house after her mother went to bed. Hanayomi is just as famous at my school as Hanahiko is. Hey, Aida, please tell them about those rumors. Do I have to? Uh -huh. Okay, fine. Aida reluctantly tells us at Suzu's request. They're just rumors I read, but... Chapter 3 Hanayomi Hey, remember that one story? You know, the one about the public phone box in H City. There's a ghost that looks like a bride, and she'll find what you're looking for. One of my friends actually tried it. He went to the specific phone box that lets you talk with ghosts. The phone suddenly started ringing. He slowly picked up the phone. 
but all he could hear was this weird smacking noise. He stayed on the line until... Did you see it? He heard a woman whisper. So he did what the rumors said to do and said, No, I haven't seen it. Then she said, What do you want to see? His cat had gone missing, so he asked where it was. When he looked where the woman said it was, it really was there. So the rumors are totally true. I want to go ask her where my future bride is now. Oh, want to come with me? There. I carry Mary from the car and gently place her back on the sofa. Thank you very much. Being in your arms is not bad, but I am most calm when I am here. The, d the doll really talks. I can't say I expected that. Then does that mean all that stuff about the mark is true, too? On the way over, we update, updated Susan and Aida with just about all they needed to know. They may not completely believe us, but they're not rejecting it outright either. It seems like Aida in particular has already experienced some memory loss. Something about forgetting the names of anime characters or voice actors. Chrissy looked at him strange, but he appears to be... <laughs> but, but he appears to be taking it quite seriously, that was funny. And Suzu snuck out of her house because she believed the rumors about Hanayome. They both believed in the occult already. I'm pretty sure they'll help us find a way to escape the mark. Granted, they're also really curious about Hanayome. Pardon me, but may I speak? The marks on Suzu and Aida. They are likely from Hanayome. And Lady Christie, the feeling I sense from your mark is the same as theirs. So we can assume Hanayomi also gave the mark to you. Do you recall encountering her? Something weird did happen. Right before I entered the forest, I stepped in the phone box on T-Mountain. The phone rang out of nowhere. Oh, it might be because of that. The telephone box at that rest area is also in the rumors of Hanayomi. But, but I didn't pick it up. It creeped me out, so I left. I was never able to give that person one final call because of that. Uh... Who are you talking about? It is not for children to know. F fine. So, there are other phone boxes like that? Uh, I think. There are three that Hanayomi will call from. The one we went to in the a, in a highway parking lot is one. And one is at T Mountain Rest Area. That's the one Miss Christy went to. And, um, Aida, where's the last one? At the park by T Park. Yeah, at the park by T Apartment Complex. It's the only one inside the city. But why just those three locations? Don't know. The BBS I read didn't say. Um, mister? Do you really think Hanayomi is the one who gave us the marks? But the rumors about Hanayomi go back five years. And no one's ever mentioned that if you call her, you'll get a mark. Suzu's right. Rumors about this mark thing only popped up super recently. So you're saying... Hanayomi hasn't always been giving out the mark? If that's true, I wonder what triggered the change. Of course, I can't really say seeing as I don't know anything about spirits. A ghost helping people find what they're looking for. That's pretty strange. Definitely the definition of a ghost story. Hey, 
Mr. Fasan, if those rumors are true, why don't we try asking where the stolen statues are? If we return them to their places, it might just save our lives. Search for the Buddha statues. If Chrissy's right, we might be able to escape the mark without fighting a spirit. Mary, what do you think? A good question. Objects with human forms are easily able to gain inexplicable powers. Bleeding stone statues, cursed dolls, there are many examples. Historical statue, statues of gods and Buddhas would certainly be no exception. Asking Hanayomi about them would be a good idea. So says the doll before our eyes that has the inexplicable power to talk. Maybe it wouldn't be strange that Buddha statue would bring down divine wrath. <clears throat> Lord of a sigh. May I add, as I explained previously, your mark is, it is different from the others. Vanquishing spirits seems to weaken your mark's power. It's been several days since she told me that I was going to die. Taking care of the spirits we encountered is likely how I'm still among the living. What are you trying to say? I cannot say what the relationship between your mark and Hanayoma is. But it is true it is in your, in your best interest to track down spirits. I hope you will guide these mark bearers this evening as well. <sighs> I can't really picture Chrissy and Aida facing off against a spirit by themselves. If they failed, then the child would suffer the deadly consequences. That would weigh heavily on me. No turning back. I'll figure something out. Thank you. Mary bows her head slightly. <laughs> now, you should begin investigating Hanayomi. Why does she only call from three public phones within each city? Here, her secret may lie in the answer. You visited the parking lot already. Please investigate Tea Mountain in the park by Tea Apartment Complex. New info is added to the spirit file. Rumors of Hanayomi. Other. Rumors of Hanayome. With the end of the 90s, online infrastructure has advanced the popularity of a certainly widely used BBS. Hanayome is an urban legend that sprung up from that BBS. It goes as follows. Certain telephone booths in H City will let you talk to ghosts. If you go inside one and wait, the phone will suddenly ring. Pick it up and you'll hear a strange lip smacking noise. A woman will ask, have you seen it? Rumors say you're supposed to reply with, I haven't seen it. She responded with, what do you want to see? Someone actually followed the instruction and was able to find a missing pet. What a strange tale. A lot of people were, are interested in this ghost, wanting to find things of people who become lost. But not a single one has ever mentioned getting a mark from her. But the circumstances seem to imply the spirit gave the mark to Aida and Suzu. Plus, why is this spirit called a bride? If she appears as a bride, then someone must have seen her. First phone boxes. Three phone boxes in H City let you speak with a ghost. One seems to be the one Aida and Suzu used. It shouldn't take long to reach the other two by car. I'm concerned about the statues stolen from H Shrines too. If Hanayome really can tell us where they are, that would save us a lot of, a lot of time. There's only one way to find out. Ah, I'm so mad about the spirit power. I worked so hard for that spirit power. All right, partner. I will take Christy. We'll go to the rest area first. The phone booth stands solitary on the edge of the vacant rest area. Oh, look at that. You can see the city in the background. An endless sea of trees stand behind it. Chrissy must have run into the forest after she heard the phone ring. I can hear a dog howl from nearby. It almost sounds sad, but I'm probably just imagining it. Imagining it. Chrissy doesn't seem to be bothered by it. She's completely focused on the phone box. 
I must have got my mark from Hanayome back then. But I was completely oblivious. I wasn't exactly in the right state of mind. You must say the phone is supposed to ring if you wait by it for a minute. For a while. I'm guessing waiting outside doesn't count. Probably not. It only rang after I stepped in it. But the booth is too small for two people. Either I or Chrissy would have to go in. You aren't thinking I'll do it, are you? Dangerous jobs are best left to men. Oh, what the fuck? I guess I'll just have to go in. It, it's cramped inside and almost impossible to move around at all. I'd be a sitting duck if a spirit attacked me while I'm in here. I'm probably going to die. The clouded glass makes it hard to see the outside. That just makes me more nervous. I wonder how long I have to wait until the phone rings. To pass the time, I glance around at the inside of the booth. There's a poster attached to the window. Help our investigation. On the night of blah blah blah. blah. Oh. Is that August 2nd or February 8th? An assault took place in the forest nearby. If anyone has any info on this case, please notify H Police Department. This is dated five years ago. Looks like something terrible happened here. The phone begins to ring. I hesitantly reach out and pick it up. The only sound I hear is the dial tone. No one is speaking. What's going on? Suddenly, there's a strange noise. Crunching, smacking. Like the sound of saliva as someone chews. <laughs> Did you see it? Tucked in the smacking is a woman's voice. The voice is creepy, cold and chills me down to the bone. Is this Hanayomi? <laughs> Did... <laughs> you... see... it? She asked a second time. The rumors mentioned that I should say... Very seriously, I say... I haven't seen it. <laughs> what do you want to see? It's going exactly as the rumor said. Hanayomi is supposed to tell you the location of whatever you're looking for. Chrissy told me to ask about the Buddha statues that were stolen from H Shrine. I'll give it a try. Buddha statues? Lord Buddha? Doesn't your arm already have the mark of the Buddha on it? Tell me, you want a new Buddha? What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Tell me. Well, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, 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 tell me. Tell me. The line goes dead. The woman's scream is still ringing in my ears. I feel sick. It must be because of my brush with that blood curling, blood curling insanity. Why didn't she answer my question? What was different from when the others asked? The mark on my arm burns dully, like it's reminding me it exists. Maybe this is why she was acting strangely. And she did say something to the effect that Buddha gave me this mark. Was she just too insane to dif differentiate between Buddha and a monstrous spirit? 
Or is this mark really the work of divine wrath from the Buddha statues? I wait a while longer, but the phone doesn't ring again. There's no point in staying in here. As soon as I leave the booth, Chrissy comes up to me. <clears throat> you don't look well. What happened? I tell Chrissy about my conversation with Haniome. What? That's not in the rumors. Chrissy's bro furrows in confusion. Should we go check out the other phone box for now? Maybe there's a clue there. We can also see if you can ask again. There's no time to get lost in thought. The last phone booth is at the park by T Apartments in the other direction. We'll head there after stopping at the mansion. It's probably wise to ask Mary what she knows since it's on the way. I'm getting some water. Check the info. In the booth is a poster looking for info on a crime that happened nearby. The phone rings while, while I'm distracted, just like the rumors. When I pick up, a wo pick up, a woman answers, smacking her lips. But I can't get info on the statues from her. For some reason, she's behaving differently from what we were told to expect. There's one more telephone booth. You better check it out, too. Oh, I can't examine the area. Fuck. Oh, we gotta return. I tell Mary what happened at the phone box. You say Hanayoma started act... You know, you say Hanayoma acted strangely. She called the spirit that cursed you with your mark, Buddha. I cannot say I know what she saw, but from what you said, she will likely not respond to your question. That does not mean she does not understand you, however. Use any method available to attain as much information as you can. Hmm. I see a small park tucked between all of the looming apartment buildings. There's no one here. I guess everyone's already asleep. They said this was the phone booth from the Hanayama rumors, right? Would a spirit really appear in the middle of the city like this? Well, now that I'm here, I still have no idea why Hanayama hung up on me. I follow the rumors exactly. Where did I go wrong? I scratch my head. Don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it. Suddenly I hear that strange voice again. Gossip. In other words, the rumors. What will happen if I don't follow the rumors? Christy, go back to the car. There's something I want to try. But it might end up backfiring on me. S sure. I don't know what you're going to do, but please be careful. Oh, and I almost forgot. I have a message from Aida. Yeah? It's about the latest information on Haniyome from the BBS. Take a look. Chrissy hands me a note written by Aida. Don't talk about eyes or things like it when you're on the phone with Hanayome. If the call goes sideways, somehow, don't say, I, okay? P.S. Best to avoid anything that even looks, that even sounds like I. 
What? Don't say I. This is it? Yeah, that's all. Anyway, Aida said he was sure it would come in handy. I'll keep it in mind. Chrissy returned to the car. Oh, we're back in here, dudes. I step inside and wait for the phone to ring. There's a poster in this booth, too. Just like the one at the rest area. This looks like it's been here for a few years. Young woman kidnapped. A young local woman was kidnapped close to this location. If you're a witness to this crime, please notify the police. MPD. February 8th. Five years ago. I think the poster I saw at the rest area had the exact same date. Coincidence? So it was February 8th. Okay. Oh shit. <clears throat> the phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. I hear a noise, like someone chewing gum from the other end of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. Did you see it? The line goes dead. I wait a while longer, but the phone doesn't ring again. I guess I should step out and try again. I'll wait outside for a bit and then try going back in. Ah, oh, sh- Ah! Don't go by the rumors. I was trying to say not- I was trying not to say I. I have to wait a while? How long do I have to wait? Damn it. I, can I, I can't examine anything. Fuck. I'll switch out either. Uh. Uh. go to the phone booth at the park again. I'll wait for Hanayomi to call, call one more time. Don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it. Huh. I repeat the mysterious words I heard to myself. I'll, uh... I'll, uh... Wait in the car. Oh, yeah. Did you, do, did you look at the latest info? Alright. We're good. I read it. If you get into trouble while on the phone with Hanayomi... Don't say I or anything that sounds like it. Even words with the sound are dangerous. Yeah, that's exactly it. Who knows if any of that would be helpful, but I might but I may as well remember it. I'll be careful. Aida returns to the car. I step inside and wait for the phone to ring. There it goes again. The phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. I hear a noise like someone chewing gum from the other end of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. Did you see it? You saw, didn't you? You saw that thing of me. Oh shit, I'm in some shit. I'm in some shit. The voice cuts off. Ooh! Something outside collides violently with the glass of the booth, but I can't see it.
What did I get into? Tell me, how did you see it? With your own eyes? Or eyeglasses? A telescope? What do I say? My own eyes? Oh god, I'm gonna die! <laughs> oh, I'm gonna die. You saw it. You said you saw it. What color? A beautiful color? Red? Pink? Green? I'm gonna lie my ass off. Oh my god. Are you serious? Maybe pink? Oh my god. I should have said telescope. Huh? It sounds like something's searching around outside the phone box. You saw it. What kind of person are you? What's important to you? Your dreams, romance, love, which, which do you choose? I don't know, I don't wanna die. I believe in love, I believe in love. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna die. Oh, that was wrong. She's about to crush me or kill me in that thing. Suddenly the phone goes dead. Oh shit. Someone knocks on the glass door. Um, is something wrong? Are you okay? Is that a stranger passing by? I guess they're wondering what's going on with me. Oh god, I'm turning to get my head off. It's a relief to hear a normal person's voice. Yeah, sorry, it's nothing, really. As I'm turning around, I feel the door of the booth violently fly open. Two dark shadowy arms are the last thing my eyes see. The image burned into my retinas. I died. <laughs> Fuck. So I got one of the answers right. I got one of the answers right. Decide again. So I got one of the answers right. So I'm just... Just outright lie. Just be. That's what I'm going to do. Don't adhere to the gossip. Defy it. Huh. I repeat the mysterious words I heard to myself. Oh, uh, wait in the car. Oh, yeah. Did you look at the latest info? R right. We're good. I read it. If you get in the trouble while on the phone with Hanayomi, don't say I or anything that sounds like it. Even words with the sound are dangerous. Yeah, that's exactly it. Who knows if any of that will be helpful, but I might as, may as well remember it. I'll be careful. E Aida returns to the car. I step inside and wait for the phone to ring. The phone rings. Here we go again. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. I hear a noise, like someone chewing gum from the other end of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. <laughs> saw that thing of me.
The voice cuts off. <laughs> Something outside collides violently with the glass of the booth, but I can't see it. How did you see it? With your own eyes or eyeglasses? A telescope? I'm gonna outright lie. Telescope, 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 telescope. Sounds like something's searching around outside the phone box. You saw it. You said you saw it. What color? A beautiful color. Red? Pink? Green? Oh my god, I haven't even found any talismans yet. <laughs> still. Crap. A dead save. The phone goes dead. The next I know, the bloody handprint is gone and so is the ominous presence. The questions she asked me were strange. She was particularly anxious about what I had seen. I think I did a good job not mentioning anything like eyes in my answer. Overly conscious over being seen. Maybe that's where her secret lies. I exit the booth and Anita rushes up to me. D did something happen? I mark hurt all of a sudden. I tell Anita about what happened in the telephone booth. Man, it beats me. Guess there's no way he'd have the answer. Oh, hey. Something's on the ground there. Sure enough, there's a folded a piece of paper lying near the booth. Looks like a piece of stationery. I don't think it was there before I went into the phone box. I pick up the paper and open it. To Seiko. I'll dispel, I'll dispel all of your heartache. So forget the horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. An incident? The posters I saw on the telephone booths mentioned something like that too. Could they be connected? I asked Aida what they think. Hmm, I don't know. I don't think he's considering it seriously. Anyway. Anyway, he visited all three boxes now. Wanna head back? I bet Suzu's worried about us. Yeah. We should probably head back for now. New info was added from the spirit file. The third phone box. I can't examine anything. Oh, fuck. Oh, welcome back. 
Christy is there in the garage. She's going through the files full of articles on criminal cases. How did the investigation go? Uh, okay, I guess. Aida and I tell Christy what we discovered. Hmm, I see. I can see Chrissy's mind working. Hey, Mr. Versailles, Versailles. You know those posters in that bit of stationery you found? Could they be linked to Hanayomi? She might have been someone who was caught up in the incident and killed. And if that's the case, then... She glances over at the files. The dates were five years ago, right? Then there might be an article on what happened here in, those, in these files. Let's get Suzu to help out, too. Go get a move on. All four of us begin reading through files. The clippings range from the smallest dispute to the most heinous crime in each city. But they're all dated five years ago or earlier. Did they get stored in the garage because they're so old? After a while... I might have found it. It's from five years ago in February. The victim's name is Seiko. Aida lays the file out, file out on the desk and we all peer at it. The file has articles about an incident that happened five years ago. The victim's name was Seiko Hasegawa. Apparently she committed suicide in the forest by Eight Castle on the eve of her wedding. She was in her dress when she was found. Uh, uh, Suzu, you probably shouldn't read anymore. It's pretty bad. Thanks, Aida. But, I want to know more about Hanayome. I feel like I need to do this. She's cringing, but she sounds determined. Between this and sneaking out at night, she's a, she's, a, she's a surprisingly brave kid. It's rather odd for someone her age. I remember now. This happened back when I used to be a news anchor. Chrissy mutters just loud enough to hear. Then do you know the whole story? It was horrible. It's hard to recount. A woman was abducted by a gang while she was walking her dog. They brought her to the forest and assaulted her. People found her battered and staggering along the road the next day. The dog was run over and killed near the forest when it chased after them. That's horrifying. Yeah, but... That wasn't the end of Seiko Hasegawa's misfortune. Aida somberly cut... Oh yeah. Aida somberly cuts in. His usual grin is nowhere to be found. It's well known in some circles, but her assault was photographed. The pictures were sent to her fiancé. They threatened to make them public if he didn't pay up. I heard he gave them a ton of money to get the photos and the negatives. Is that true, Christy? Yeah, I heard that as well. Because of all that, Miss Seiko had a mental breakdown. And in the end, she hung herself. She'd been, a, she'd, been, she, she'd been a serious, honest woman, so she just couldn't bear it. The cruel fate of a woman attacked before a wedding. We fall silent as that reality weighs, in, weighs on us. Um, Suzu timidly speaks up, her face pale. Maybe there's a connection between what happened to Miss Hasegawa and Hanayomi's phone boxes. According to the article, the incident that wrecked her life took place near each phone box. She was abducted by the park and assaulted by the rest area. She was found wandering near the parking lot by a highway. The phone booths connect Hanayomi and Seiko Hasegawa. The coincidence sends a shiver down my spine. So that note we found, found by the telephone booth. Did Seiko's fiance write it? Most likely. What's strange is that it was there and not where she committed suicide. Did Hanayomi put it there? Maybe she was telling us something. I have no clue how spirits think, but if Susan's right, then that note is an important clue for us. I seem to recall Seiko's fiance was a famous musician. As a result, the case was widely publicized at the time. It happened right after they returned from a romantic trip to Greece. Old ladies were sobbing about how it made it all the more tragic. 
and the poor dog they brought on the trip died heroically as well. Where's the fiancé now? Well, he began acting strange due to the shock and then went missing. Some say her suicide was to follow him. But he wasn't the only one who disappeared. It sounds like all of the culprits went missing too. You hear about that online too? Well, something like that. The internet wasn't the same back then. There were only hubs. Hubs. Like pre-internet chat rooms. Everyone was talking about it on their occult hubs back then. There was one person in the community who knew way too much. I think he was one of the culprits. He brought up a bunch of things, like taking pictures and all that. Idiot. And I bet those were the pictures of the assault. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. After they were finished, those assholes got a camera out and took pictures of her, of her face soaked with tears. The whole time she yelled, don't look, don't look. Don't look, huh? Hanyomi has an extreme reaction to, be, to being seen by others. He kept going on about it, night after night, until he suddenly stopped posting. People who knew him said, said they couldn't contact him at all. Those guys deserve to die, but it's still really creepy, you know? Suddenly a lion from the note pops into my head. I'll dispel all of your heartache. Hey, Christy. Do you happen to know exactly where in the forest Seiko killed herself? I was a reporter at the time, so I did go to the lo lo location. But that was five years ago. So I don't remember exactly. I feel like I went west from that big arch at the entrance. So you're really going to go? Yeah. You might be able to figure something out about Haniyome. Okay. Though I'd much prefer to stay here. <laughs> New info was added to the spirit file. Gathering info at the mansion. Other. Gathering info at the mansion. The garage shelves contain files on accidents. Oh wait, is that new? Okay, so. Oh yeah, I'll read that. Hanyomi's acting even more strangely than before. She seems anxious about being seen, or eyes in general. It's impossible to be sure since it's only over the phone. Plus the note we found outside the booth is disconcerting. To Seiko, I'll dispel all of your, all of your heartache. So forget that horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. The garage shelves contain files and accidents and crimes within H City, from decades old to just a few years ago. We all search through them and find a case with a victim name, named Seiko Hasegawa, the person mentioned in, in the note. The details of her case are sickening. The victim was abducted by a group as she was walking her dog in the forest while waiting, awaiting her wedding day. She was found by a phone booth along the highway the next day, but, but that's not all. The culprits photographed the assault and blackmailed her fiancé with the photos for money. A few days later, all the stress caused her to kill herself. Her fiancé went missing afterward, with people believing he also committed suicide. Chrissy investigated the case back then. She says the fiancé was a famous musician. Tuseko, I'll dispel all your heartache. Those words bother me. But there's something else too, and that's the fact that the culprits also went missing after she died. This gassy case is still unable to gain full closure. The phone box that guided us to the case, the fact that the woman who hung herself wore a wedding dress, the connection to the forest by Hotel Castle. The other Mark Bearers don't won't like it, but we need to go back to the forest. But why am I so sure of that? That is a wrap. I will save it here. <laughs> I 
hope that this is the appropriate file. I hope this is the appropriate file. Let's, let me make sure real quick, because uh, if I didn't do this, I would end up having to start all over again. I'll be so angry with myself. Sweet, okay. So this is where we can find out where Aftermath survived. Aftermath survived. Alright, that's a, that's a wrap. <laughs> that is a legit wrap, folks. But uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the game and I will see you in the next video. Let me make sure I save save again before I exit. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the game and I will see you guys in the next video. Ciao.